Let's review the macro page on the Power Investing website, and I'll give you an idea of how we use it every day to start our analysis process. First, we have the triple play charts, which gives us a side-by-side -side view of the three major ETFs markets that we follow, the SP 500, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. And it allows us to look at them through the view or through the lens of our RSI charts, which are designed around Andrew Cardwell's work. And we have them on every frame. You have the, num, uh, the MA bands here, you have the bull and bear ranges in the RSI window, as well as the CFG, which is Andrew's proprietary uh, complementary indicator to the RSI that allows us to work better within those bull and bear ranges. Now, looking at all three of these together, it gives us a good idea of kind of what parts of the markets are working, what are not with small caps, growth in uh, technology, and just the broader S&P 500. Once we've gotten a quick look there, we move on down to the breadth of the market. And here we use our power universe, which is basically a universe that we created of 3,000 stocks, which has no ETFs, has no bond proxies, has no closed-in funds. So it's really just stock-based companies out there. And we take that breadth and look at all the major categories that we like to follow. On the left, you'll see the chart where this is visualized. And on the right, you can see all this data in the grid or the spreadsheet form that we have for each category. We have our new high, new low indicator along with the two moving averages that we use. We have the advanced decline line here next window down. We then go to our percent above the moving average. The red is the 200 day moving average, the blue is the 50 day moving average, and the green is the 20 day moving average. So the percent above those. From there, the summation, the, the McClellan summation index is our next intermediate. And of course, that's always paired with the McClellan oscillator. Under that is the breadth thrust, which is basically a bound McClellan oscillator is the way we like to look at it. And then of course, the equal weight price chart of our 3000 stock index. Okay, so we look at the breadth of this on the on the major market, and it gives us a good view of kind of whether we see breadth strengthening or weakening, how weakening and how the participation is currently moving. Now, once we've gotten that general view, we can then move down to the world ETF RS rankings. This takes our proprietary relative strength calculation, which is these RS columns here. And it basically is something we can use on any list of securities that we want to put together. They can be stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, anything we want to put together, we can rank against each other to get an idea of who's really outperforming or underperforming in the time frame we're looking at. Price base, so it still has a very rooted in what's actually happening in the markets. Now in this particular list, we like to see the US indices, the QQQ, the SPY, and IWM up towards the top half. Um, but it does give us a good idea if we want to choose or, or pick some, look for some other opportunities around the world with the different world ETFs. There's about 62 in the list, and it gives us a good broad view of what's going on pretty much everywhere. After we go through that, we then move to our intermarket ETF RS rankings. We base these on the John Murphy books, intermarket analysis books that he wrote two of and they're excellent books to give you an idea of how to use different asset classes and how they compare to each other to get a gauge on where the economic cycle is at the moment. John did a great job depicting this and it just uses a lot of different relative comparatives to look at different markets versus each other. Well, we realized from there what we could do is take it and put all of these major categories in the list and we'll just rank them against each other. So that way we can always see who's outperforming and underperforming versus each other. We still look at those relative comparative charts from time to time, but this gives us a great view of kind of what's performing where anytime we want to look at it. Now we like to see the equity markets here stay in the top half of this list. Um, and currently the IWM is not quite there, so we have a little bit of work to do. The next RS ranking list we move down to is the size and style list, which then gives us a good idea of whether we are seeing participation and where the participation is inside the market, whether it's going to small caps or mid caps or large caps, 
and also whether it's going to the growth side or the value side. Growth has led for a long, long time. Every time value decides to uh, move its way up the list, um, everyone wants to think there's a major change, and it might be, but we continue to watch this because oftentimes it lasts for a month or two and then it'll shift back to growth. If that, as long as that continues to happen, we want to continue to focus there. The next area we're working with is the sector area. Once we've got an idea of the broad market, we decide to drop down and take a look at what areas within the market are working. The first list that we look at, or rankings list, is the market weight sector, or capitalization weighted sector rankings. And we use the Vanguard funds for a proxy here. And it gives us an idea of what sector is leading, what sectors are lagging, and how they are moving. Over here on the right side, you can see these RS movers giving you an idea of how many points they've moved up or down over the last five days as the regular, and 21 days as the second window. Once we've looked at that, we then go to look at the equal weight and the small cap ETF rankings, two other lists that we take, and we not only look at them from their own standpoint, but we also look at them in comparison with each other. Using these three lists together, it gives us an idea of what sectors are moving the best and where within those sectors you're seeing the most opportunity, whether it be the small caps or the mega caps or somewhere in between. So the broader it is, the better, but if we can pinpoint um, what part of the sector might be moving, it gives us a better idea on which companies we want to focus on. That should give you an overview of the macro page on the Power Investing website and also how we use it to get a good view of where we are with the markets quickly, concisely, before we move into our deeper analysis of the sectors and subsectors. So we hope this gets you a good start and we hope you'll come back and review this page often and learn the flow so it can be your quick macro view before starting going into your deeper analysis process.